guys. Okay. In the past, I have done book reviews. And I would like to do that at this time. Now, in full disclosure, let's be honest. I don't read that many of the quote, quote, bushcraft books that are out there. Not for anything against their authors, no matter who they are. But if you've ever read the SAS Survival Manual, you will very quickly realize that that book spawned a hundred authors who take basically the same book and just re-spin it. It's the same details, the same phrases. It's like they just took this, cut and pasted a little different, and that's it. And so most of the time when I pick up a book and someone has handed me a bushcraft book or gifted me, etc. Usually when I read probably five minutes of it, I'm going to realize that's all it is. And I'll be honest, it just loses interest because I don't want to put anything against the authors that are trying to produce a work. God love you. Please keep trying. But it's not going to be anything that I want to read because of my experience. Okay? Not to be bragging or whatever, but just realistically, it's like you've seen this movie. You know what I mean? They may have respun it, but this is another episode of that movie. You just already know where it's going and how it's going to end. And so I really don't read a lot of those books, just to be straight honest. But at my gathering this time, I was gifted by my good friends. Now, I'm not sure which one gifted, so I'm going to give both of them credit. And that is Mr. Chris Hall and Mr. John Pinkard. They said, here, and handed Blackie a milk crate full of books and said, if you'd like one, you can have it. I don't know which one of them was actually given the books. I'm going to give them both credit. And I thumbed through them. There are a lot of really good books and things like that. And then I spotted the Surviving the Wild by Joshua Inyard. Now, Joshua has his own a channel, a really good channel called Gray Bearded Green Beret. A lot of times for short, they call him GB2 or GB squared for Gray Bearded, double B and two. So Gray Bearded Green Beret. He has a very good channel. Um, he has a military experience in special forces of being, you know, Ranger, Green Beret, etc. And he also is working with our government teaching our war fighters today in various capacities. And so that right there shows he's got experience. Right up. And to Josh, thank you, respect, sir, and thank you for your service. Straight up. So I had knew I knew he had created a book, but I had never seen the book. And so when they said here and they're handing me books to look at, and I picked it up, to be honest, straight up, I fully expected that it was going to be another dry dissertation of the SAS Survival Manual. I was wrong. Completely wrong. Um, he writes in a very clean, open, to the point, but not boring. It's something that endears you to read more style. And I was very impressed. Really, I was. It was rather a breath of fresh air. So much so that I read that entire book in six hours. I'm a speed reader, guys, okay? But I read the entire book in six hours and found it extremely well thought out, extremely well detailed, really honestly focused, but not so focused as to run it in the ground. It left work for the reader to go. It gave you a working knowledge for you to expand upon without bogging you down in so much detail that the student's going to be lost. After a while, the, the questions in the mind come up. And as, as myself, I'm trying to put together a book so I fully understand where it's coming from. Of How do you pass on this information to a student through the written word and not overload them with all the variables for this moment. See, that's tough. That is really, really tough. But he does it. He pulls it off in a way that the book is a very good source of the information 
and it's written in a natural progression of a series of the next skill and the next skill and it's done in such a way that it does make it make sense so I have already told somebody they're getting this book when I'm done with it uh, I'm handing it off to them because I think this would be a real asset to them but when I like a work typically I will read it front to back in one sitting or pretty close and then I will take a day or two to let that sink in and then I will go back and I will reread it in chapter groups of say two or three chapters or a heading or a topic because you retain better the more you read it but not all at one time now let me explain that and this is something I learned in college and etc if I give you ten things on a list to remember You'll remember you read the list. You'll remember that first couple and the last couple and maybe one in the middle. In between that gets kind of fuzzy. And that's just the way different people learn. If I break that 10 up into groups of three, you'll remember the beginning and the end, the beginning and the end, the beginning and the end. Well, you retain a whole lot more, see? So I read a book entirely through to get like an overall of the whole thing. And then I will come back and reread it by the chapters. I'll read the chapter, and then I'll put the book down, and I think about that chapter. The next time I put it up, I pick it up like the next day, and I read the next chapter, or two or three chapters, depending on how it goes together. And I retain more. And people have said, Blackie, how did you get this knowledge? That's how. A reading and then detail reading a book afterward helps me retain. And this is a very, very good book for that. So. I'm going to get up close and let you see up close, but I wanted to suggest if you're building a library, this would be a very good book for you to get to put onto your shelf. It's called Surviving the Wild, and I'll get you up close where you can see the ISBN number right there. It's got good illustrations, but not overdone. It's got pictures, which I like instead of just drawing sometimes. Sometimes a drawing is better, and a lot of times a picture is better. But he does it in a common language, straight up, just like someone standing there talking to you, way of writing, that is very refreshing, really. Because so many times when they do pick, whenever they do write writers in general, they lose the connection to the student. They're trying to convey this amount of knowledge on paper, but they kind of lose that voice of the student of asking the question, well now what do you mean by that type deal? And he does a good job of addressing that, of pointing out you know, how things work and why they should work and why they shouldn't work. You know. And that, I think, makes it worthwhile to go on the shelf. I will be getting another copy of this to go on my book shelf to add to my collection. I think it's one of the best books that I have read, honest to God, in the last 10 years on woodcraft. Really. Um, and I know Josh. We're not big buddies or something. I'm not doing this for promotion. I'm not getting any money out of this. But it's because you guys have asked me about books, what I like, where do I get my information. And I want to share that with you. When I find work that really seems to click, that I think be really good for students to have, I bring it to you. I brought up cookbooks, old boy scout books, other contemporary people's books in the past. And I recommend this book, Two Thumbs Up from Blackie. If you're building a witchcraft bushcraft, library shelf i recommend this hope you've enjoyed this guys thank you very much for watching until next time i'm blackie wishing you safe journeys have a great day guys